Okay, let's not beat around the trees or the bush. Reason 13 needs stem separation, in my opinion. And this project here, if I load it up, is a prime example as to why. Take a listen. All right, let's take a listen to the original sample. It's got more than one element to it. So you've got the vocal sound, the pad sound, some clicking with his fingers or finger sound, snap sound. little bell sound. So right off the bat there, that sample there could use some stem separation. Now I kind of just, kind of just worked around it in my project here. So as you can hear, it sounds quite nice. However, I've kind of reached the limit currently of where I can take this unless I get some stem separation. And the reason why is because I don't want that vocal during the verse of the instrumental. So at the moment we're playing the chorus, which that vocal sound sounds fine. But here, I want that vocal sound gone. Now, if I was in Logic, FL Studio, MPC, <sighs> Serato, I would be able to really quickly just remove that vocal using stem separation. And I do feel that Reason 13 kind of needs stem separation. And I know, of course, people tell me that, you know, you can load up your projects or load up your sounds in Serato and then load that in as a plugin inside of Reason or load Reason into another Reason devices into another door and use someone else's stem separation but I want Reason to have it I want to be staying inside Reason and I want to click a button here right now and just go take those vocals out and this track will be on to a well we'll be on to a winner because it sounds pretty good right So, Logic, at the time of recording this video, Logic Pro has just announced that they're doing stem separation. So it does seem like, basically, it's becoming a standard now that stem separation used to be a thing. But for the interest of this video, I'm just going to go to the other part of this track. Basically, I'm gonna, we're going to go back in time before this whole entire bit was made. And we're going to start off with the sample. I'm outside in the woods today because I was working on this project at home in the headphones. However, there was drilling and banging from a neighbor at sort of like half past seven in the evening. It kind of annoyed me. So out I come into the woods to uh, get bitten by mosquitoes and talk to you in this video. And drink some fine Stella Artois. And watch people look at me funny as I talk to myself on my phone.
Okay, so start with the sample here. I'm not going to skip through it. This is the live recorded process. I'll give you some of this. So I didn't really want to edit the sample. Sometimes I might cut the sample, flip the sample, you know, chop it up a little bit. An illegal electric bike. <sighs> I thought you saw that electric bike just went past. It looks like a motorbike, but it's electric. Amazing. So anyway, I just duplicated this up. And uh, I'm going to add a base in now. So laying down a laying down a baseline now. I need a haircut. I mean, with uh, making this sort of music and stuff, I've tried to do like a recording of like a video while I'm doing it. However, I find it a bit too distracting and it just comes out like subpar. So maybe it's just better to make the music, screen record it, concentrate on doing the music and then do videos like this afterwards or maybe come back in live recorded live or well, recorded with me editing the uh, file editing the project and then screen recording that in the future when there's not people drilling of course So the strings you're going to see being made in a minute were made by one of my favourite presets actually, which is the big strings, one of the oldest and one of my favourite. It just sounds really good to me, it's really easy to edit, kind of gives that old kind of 90s kind of R&B vibe to it. And you'll see how I recorded that in a minute. Basically, press record and record three times. And then obviously it's got like a layer of, you know, high notes, mid notes and low notes. Now what I normally do is I'll split that up and basically so I can edit the EQ of each, but we're not that far into the project yet. I'll do that later on. I kind of tend to do mastering and sound design really on a separate thing. This is just, this is just basically laying down the idea and building around the sounds and the project around this sample which is in need of stem separation because it's got a snap it's got a snap a vocal a pad and a bell all in one sample so it does make it a little bit difficult to use i mean if you were sampling from a cd or vinyl this is kind of the thing you want to avoid unless you've got stem separation because you know it's hard to edit with multiple sounds going on but i made it work but I think to take it a step further, it definitely needs stem separation to get rid of that vocal, just to the chorus. I'm happy with the rest of it, the bell and the other sounds that are in it. I just want to get rid of that vocal 
did I say chorus there? I want to get rid of the vocal, I want to keep the vocal during the chorus, and I want to get rid of the vocal during the verse. I mean, I think it's good to keep in there in the chorus because it's kind of like a, a spark to kind of create lyrics over the top of it. Okay, so we're not doing this, I didn't do the strings there. I did a another preset from the NN19, just a layer over the bass to give it more, a bit more texture. I find it quite good to actually look back at old, oh, look back at previous stuff that was screen captured. Just kind of work out how you did wrong, how you could have improved your workflow. When I say you, I mean me. So we're trying to add the strings now. Just gonna sort of experiment and uh, do a little bit of improvisation before we hit record. And then when I hit record, it'll come out the way I want it, rather than having to re-record and play around with MIDI. You'll see that I don't really edit MIDI in this project. I just lay it down and that's how it stays. No quantization either. Sometimes I listen back to these recordings that I make, I kind of think back and think, actually, that kind of sounded all right, the bits I, I missed. So screen recording actually has the added benefit of saving things I might have not have kept, because I'll hear something and I'll be like, oh, actually, I'm going to add that to it. But during the process, I just want to get something, something down. And so, you know, so I record the first line here. One take, first line. Top line. And I'll just add to it. Actually, we'll, there probably will be a little bit of editing here. I can't quite remember. It's one of the reasons why I look back at these uh, screen recordings, because I can't always remember exactly what I did. But most of that sounds pretty good, first take. And one note that was off, not bad. This is quite a long video. We're aiming for 30 minutes. I thought you might find it interesting just to see the process. Feel free to skip through if you like. So 
I'm just playing a little bit randomly on top of this just to see what strings would sound good on a different note. You know, so we can get a little bit of a cacophony going. One off note there. Okay, so we've got two lines of MIDI now. Uh, I'm going to put one more line of MIDI and that'll be our string cacophony complete. But then later on, what normally happens is I uh, will load up three devices and then split this so the MIDI, MIDI can be on each individual thing so I can EQ each low, mid and high on their own but this will do for now <clears throat> So I'm just clicking the lower notes now with the mouse there just to try and work out something to add to it before playing it. See what notes will work down at the bottom there before, record before recording. Okay, let's skip through. Let's go. What we got next? Skip through. Okay, add in the drums. That should be interesting. You'll notice in this project there's a lot of stock sounds going on. We've got the sample from Loop Masters, 
but pretty much everything else is coming straight out of Reason's sound bank. That includes samples and presets for devices. Just trying to work out what kind of drums would go well with this, what sort of pattern would go down well. There'll be no quantizing, I don't quantize my jumps. So, you know, most of the time, what's played is what stays on there. Very rarely do I ever play around with the MIDI after I record the drums. And it does annoy me, it's like there's a, there's a setting you can put in on Reason that kind of moves your MIDI notes automatically after you played them but I want the notes played as I played them and uh, a friend of mine he gave me a project and I used his project and well basically a collaboration so he, he started the drums he started a few little sounds and then I built my track on top of it my instrument on top of it but I kept his drums but however when I tried to record my, record my MIDI with for the strings and stuff it was all out of time or not the time I wanted because it was quantizing to grid. I couldn't figure out how to fix it so I had to basically cut all those devices and the MIDI out of his project and load it into a new Reason project for so that auto quantize feature would be stopped. It was very strange, I might have to do, do a video on that, I don't know quite what that was about. It was odd because I, I recorded all this piano and stuff and it's completely off time because it was snapping to grid to step into a grid I didn't understand. I checked regroove as well. Didn't seem to be any settings in there to make it happen. I asked him why it was doing it. He didn't know. So there you go, weird. And also while we're on the Kong here, talk about weird things. Some samples I load, some samples I load into the Kong. They multi-trigger over and over and over and over and over and they don't stop. That's what happened to EA Ski's drums. When I first put EA Ski's drums in here, I press it and they just keep on going and keep on going and you stop the track, you, you press stop and it keeps on going like indefinitely so that's another glitch. So I had to get all of the EA Ski's drums and then stem them out, basically put them all on the tracks and then stem them out and rename them all. Kind of annoying but uh, yeah, hope they fix that in Reason 13. And after I got the beat on the Kong, I just layered some sounds from a Dr. Rex on top. So what clap and a snare, I think. I think using Dr. Rex to layer over your drums is pretty cool, pretty nice. Like this, or even just use, using elements of a preset. It's quite often, you know, get something, get something going. But using Kong or Redrum with Dr. X is a good mix. I don't really need it. I don't really need to. I don't really need to go anywhere else for drums. And when I do get third party drums, they better be good, like ESG's drums.
See that vocal sound there, it's kind of annoying me because I, I, want, I want that off. So, you know, someone said to me today, someone said to me today, you know, well, it wasn't someone, it was EA Ski on his live stream. So I commented about Reason 13, it seems to not be having stems. And he said, well, maybe they want to work out, make sure that everything's working good because they don't want to have any old stems they want to make it sound good you know if it says that you know stem sounds their stems algorithm's not good enough like sounding trash and they won't release it which was a good point but if logic fl studio serato and mpc door and hardware can have stem separation then i think reason can do it But let me know in the comments down below. Do you think Reason needs stem separation? Do you agree with me that this project I've got here would sound much better if I removed the stem, or if I had stems to remove the vocal from the verse? See you in the next video. Goodbye for now.